Hi there, I'm Anna and I'm here today in London at a studio where we're going to be doing a full cast audio recording of one of our Oxford graded readers. It's called Merlin and the Kingmaker and it's one of our Domino series. Come with me. My name's Andrew Dilger and I am an editor at Oxford University Press. I work on graded readers. I'm here today to supervise the latest recording of one of our graded readers, which is in the Domino's series, and it's Merlin the Kingmaker. So a fantastic story about swords and sorcery. We have a starter level Merlin, uh, which is the first one in the series, if you like, and that's actually an Extensive Reading Foundation award winner. So we're very, very excited today about what's going to happen. I'm Sam from D Sam Recording. We're up in Tottenham Howe in London. Um, we're recording Merlin Kingmaker for OUP today. Hello, my name is Nigel Pilkington and I'm a voice actor. What I like most about English language teaching recordings is that I get to play parts I would never get to play in film, TV or theatre. So I play teenagers, I play middle-aged, I even get to play old-aged, whatever that means. As an editor, you have to really sort of uh, look for a number of things. The most important is that the actors are actually saying what the text says. It's quite easy for them to sort of skip words or make mistakes. It's also quite easy for them to read it too fast. We need to remember that this is a level one book, so quite low. So I'm listening and using my teaching experience, because I was a teacher before, to check that they're not going too fast for our learners to understand and follow the text and the story. It's important to measure how fast the actors are reading, purely for consistency. We can't start a book at 12 lines a minute like we are today and end up at, say, 2022 because it would just be really hard for the listener. It depends on the level of the teaching of the course. If it's super slow, the challenge for an actor is to keep it natural sounding without it becoming robotic. And a lot of actors find that very difficult because they tend to get excited with the emotion and rush on from word to word. So after a while, you learn to be able to bring the words off the page, but in a slow way. It's very easy here at DSound Studio because they've got it all set up perfectly. We're in the sort of engineering side, the actors are through in the recording side, and all I need to do is press a button and I can talk to them directly. Most of the time it will be the engineer who does that. I'm more concerned about what they're saying and how they're saying it. Sometimes we record it from start to finish. Um, because of COVID at the moment, we kind of can't. Some people don't want to be in a room with those other actors. Some actors need to go home earlier. For example, today, only half our actors can stay all day, so we need to do the other actors' bits first to ensure we don't miss anything. So we have a, a massive bank of sound effects, hundreds and hundreds of hours of sound effects, and I will literally just do a, a search for the, for the computer, say of a wolf howl or of a door closing, and just go through each one and put, find the right one, find the perfect one and put it, put it straight in. My favourite sound effects are really the ones that the actors do in the studio on the day. So you can hear them laughing or fighting or screaming or falling over, that kind of thing. Um, all the other effects, as the engineer will tell you, are probably added later and they're usually taken from existing recordings. My favourite one is really boring. We have one called Devon Hedgerow, which is just birds tweeting, a bit of wind and trees, and it just transports you right, right back to Devon. I think it was recorded in the 70s, but it's, it still sounds amazing now. To turn it into a finished product, I will take breaths out. There are mouth noises from the actors or clothes rustling. Sometimes I have to tighten up turns, so if the actors took too long to say their line, turn up or the opposite, extend it. Um, add those sound effects like you said, and like ambient noises of rooms, and there's also a reverb, so putting an actor in a space, say a church or a castle, to finish it all off to make it sound like it's somewhere. For me, good sound will transport you somewhere. Um, I find a lot of the time, bad sound will just take you out of that experience you're trying to enjoy. And so it's, yeah, it's about not ruining it for the listener. We record with a full cast, even though it is expensive, because it really brings the story to life. 
That's what students want. They don't just want stories, they want an experience. And using a big group cast can really do that. Domino's readers are usually a much livelier story with much more going on, a lot more characters. And because they're for younger readers as well, they want that kind of film effect with lots of different voices. Whereas our bookworms readers are for the more mature reader, say secondary school or adult readers. And often the stories are a teeny bit more straightforward. So it can be read by a single narrator. Obviously these actors are so talented, so they can do different voices anyway. Having an audio recording can really help students. Research suggests that if they listen while they read, and even if they shadow read themselves at the same time, their reading and actually their speaking will really improve. So it's that multimedia complete experience which really helps their English take off. Mm -hmm.